Okay, I think we might start, hey? All right, uh, yeah, thanks for having me and uh, welcome to Sydney. Um, I'm Kurt and uh, I want to talk about uh, Viper. Um, so uh, I presented last year at the, uh, at the uh, GLA and I talked about uh, the Viper dependency injection framework. And that was very much a, a sort of a deep dive into Viper. Um, this year, I'm going to talk more about how we use Viper to build test systems. So more of a test centric presentation, but I'll still be looking at Viper. Um, this is my son, Ben. Uh, I call him Benjineer, and he's actually helped build a test system and he's going to run that for us. So that'll be a bit of fun. Uh, so it's first test system at the ripe old age of 11. So uh, I don't know where I went wrong. <laughs> So um, before we kick off, uh, I want to talk about some of uh, my uh, uh, heroes and uh, uh, giants of female. Uh, so this is my nieces, uh, Hannah and Darcy. So two exceptionally gifted young ladies, um, Hannah on the left, Darcy on the right. Uh, Hannah is uh, doing commerce at Curtin University uh, and working at Maya. And uh, Darcy is uh, studying computer science and AI. Uh, she'll start that next year. Uh, she's currently uh, finishing her year 12 uh, in uh, one of the uh, uh, schools for the gifted. So uh, she's a very, very talented young lady. Uh, she did work experience with us last year and uh, came over and did uh, stuff with a Raspberry Pi that was just amazing and just uh, exceeded our expectations. So very very smart uh young women so i can't wait to see where they go um a little bit about us uh Madonna. so uh if you didn't catch neil's presentation this morning uh he talked about our manufacturing platform so uh essentially what that platform does is it allows uh, audible traceability and workflow management no matter where you manufacture so whether you manufacture here or a contract manufacturer, um, you get traceability. So get rid of those paper travelers, it's all digital and uh, workflow management. So the rules of your rules of manufacturing are adhered to no matter what you manufacture. And you could connect test systems and other machines into that and uh, push and pull data. So uh, if you want to learn more about that, then uh, have a chat to us and uh, try and catch Neil's presentation when it gets posted. Uh, so uh, what is Viper? So, um, so Viper is technically called a uh, dependency injection um, um, design pattern or framework. So what that means is that at runtime, we, we assemble the system and we inject uh, objects where they need to be at runtime. So the dependencies sit, sit external to the system. They're not built into it. So uh, this is unlike most systems. Most systems are a built executable and all dependencies that it will need sit within there. And so the reason why we built Viper, uh, well, it was originally called Viking uh, when I came into Cochlear and that was the architecture that we implemented for test systems there. But the reason for doing this is that by taking the dependencies outside of the system and allowing them to be injected, you can basically pre-validate, um, pre uh, pre-verify uh, these components. So that's a big deal within medical device manufacturing where change, change management uh, it is quite an involved process and quite an expensive process. So um, this had real value for uh, systems within regulated industries. And just to sort of talk about that problem. So if we look at uh, so a conventional test system sitting down on the manufacturing line uh, of a, a medical device uh, manufacturing company, so let's say, for instance, that uh, there's a, a JTAG driver that needs to be either 
um, updated, there's a bug, or, or it's, uh, it's a new um, driver. So this triggers a quite a large process, uh, starting with uh, software development, fix the bug, make the change, they uh, create unverified build. And then this starts a very top down process of uh, going through this uh, system verification protocol. And so everything needs to be verified, not just the change you made, but the entire system needs to be uh, re-verified. Uh, you need to re-verify that your test executive can test the limit correctly. Well, it's got nothing to do with the JPEG, but you've got to do that anyway. So it's a very extensive top-down uh, verification that you need to do. You start working through that, you might encounter um, an issue bug, and then you've got to go back and uh, make the change and do this again. So it's it's a it's a very expensive time consuming frustrating process once you get through that you get your verified build and of course there is a level of process to get that down to the manufacturing line so with viper by implementing dependency injection the change happens at the component that is changed or needs to be updated so similar in process but we're only running a very slim verification protocol that relates to the component that has been changed or the new component. Again, same process, but, but it's, it's much lighter. And then you are able to release your uh, verified component. Again, process to get that down to the floor, but you have significantly cut down the amount of time, money, frustration, people, need to do this. So we, we have seen uh, verification uh, protocols and processes that have been a, literally a big stack of documentation and, um, and, and months and months of work. Uh, and we have been able to significantly reduce that uh, using this kind of architecture. So it really does have value for, for regulated industries, but it, it also has a lot of value for, you know, test systems in general. So, um, yeah, uh, the way I like to explain it, because uh, I like to just ex simply explain it, is uh, just consider uh, dependency injection or Viper as, as a kid with a box of Lego. So uh, you give them a set of instructions, what we call the object definition document, they have a box of components, and that they will, the constructor, the kid, will pick up those components, pre-verified components, to build the high-level object, in this case, Penguin. Um, we could similarly give them an object definition document for a butterfly. And again, we'll use those pre-verified components. Some of those pre-verified components could be the same ones that we use for Penguin. Constructor builds it, and there we go. We've got high-level object, which is our butterfly. So, very same thing when it comes to uh, a test executive or any other system built using Viper. Have an object definition document, we've got a set of components, the constructor, which is Viper, goes away, builds that at runtime, and there we go, we've got a high level object, which is the test system for the specific product we're testing using the instrumentation and whatever components we've decided that we want to use for that. Um, Let's say uh, that, uh, the, that the client suddenly wants to change the operator view from this uh, sort of tree view test look to more of an operator centric one. Well, that's no big deal. You just change the object definition document that the uh, tree view, if we look over here, uh, the, the, the tree view uh, uses, uh, so test view, sorry uses the panel six viewer instead of the, the tree. You can build this panel six at any time or we make, a, make a, a different test view, put it in as long as it fits the test view base, if you like, if it, it inherits from test view base. So as long as that is adhered to, you can create a component, inject that at one time, and there you go, you've got your, um, your system. So, um, 
I'm just going to, to um, just play a, uh, a video of a real system. Uh, we're going to turn the music off because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's awful. <laughs> So this is a system we did for uh, our client, uh, Automate. So it tests a panel of six devices. It's using uh, PXI, uh, uh, switching uh, um, uh, multiplexers, um, DMMs, there's the, there's the jig, an Ingen jig uh, with a panel of six in it. Uh, it's using a um, uh, precision audio analyzer, um, JTAG, uh, POE, um, frequency counter, so it's a very rich test system. Um, but uh, this executive framework built on Viper handles this very well. So, um, yes, yeah, so, and if I haven't mentioned it, uh, this test executive framework and Viper is going to be released as open source. Uh, I'm working to do that. So, um, I am looking for people to have a play with it because I'd love feedback and I've got a few high level people doing that right now. So feedback has been good. So, um, but I am looking for, for more high level people to, uh, to have a play with it. Uh, oh, there we go. So I'm going to uh, hand over to the, uh, the junior engineer here and uh, he's going to run his test system. Yeah. So let's go for it. Okay, Ben. Jania, show us what you've done. Now I'm just going to take the camera so we can show what Ben and I have built. Do you want to explain what this is, Ben? Yeah. So basically this machine that we have built, there's a light under here and a solar panel. Sorry, I'm it's getting really shaky with the, the camera. Yep. I'm just going to move that over a little bit better. Um, that's, that's a bit of you. There we go. Okay. You see that? So basically the light powers the solar panel. This fan keeps it cool and everything. And this um, system that we've made will um, measure how many volts is inside this um, solar panel. So we're going to run it right now and okay. see what happens. Uh, I'll, I'll point this at the at the jig and you run your test system then and they'll be able to see sorry for my uh camera abilities there we go all right then oh i'll just shut that uh that down yeah that's right now run your oh yeah that one. there we go there we go all right so i see it's um I have to log in now. Yep. Let me do that. I'm just gonna check if anybody's chatting at me and telling me that they... all right, awesome. Everyone, everyone's good. All right, this this Right. Smoke it then. So you're about to see something pretty amazing happen. <laughs> okay, so this book is basically um, the recipe for the test. And I'm going to have to click on this. Mm -hmm. Start. Okay, and now watch this. It's pretty cool. There you go. So what happened then, Ben? So um, that turned on. And see, that was a pass because everything turned on the mm -hmm. way it should be. So if we were to turn this off yep. and run this again, something unusual might happen. Ah, oh, it failed because we turned this off. So it didn't, so didn't switch didn't, the... Uh, it didn't work. didn't switch the... Uh, the the uh, solar cell incorrectly. Yeah. 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 Awesome, so dude. That's how this um, thing works. Yeah. And yeah. I'll hand it back over to you now. All right, mate. Cool. Let's put that guy back there. Um, 
So let's have a bit more of a closer look at how this goes together. Um, so this is a, a, a really simple test system. Um, but we, we basically put this together. Um, so that test system is running off of my Rio. And uh, so we coded up the FPGA to uh, drive relays and read the voltage. And then we're using network streams to stream that back out to a Viper driver that we developed. And we've created a test class that that Viper driver hooks into. And then we just uh, created an object definition that adds it. So we started this literally yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Work a little bit into the night and uh, did a bit of work on it this morning and it was done. So it was very, very quick. But we get all this capability that the framework gives us. So it's it's quick to knock something up. Um, so let me just show you uh, how, how this looks a little bit more under the hood. Um, and show you some of the tools that we use to um, develop and edit uh, our test systems. So, Ben's test system. Okay. Now, if we're looking where, where the deployment sits, so I won't go into the source code of it yet, but this is the, the where everything executes from. This is deployment. So, we can see there's an ATE solar cell. We can run that. That was a shortcut that Ben ran. That's a shortcut, by the way. That runs this Viper.exe, which is a, essentially a bootloader for Viper. Passes in the object uh, definition document and then starts Viper to perform that construction process. Uh, I'm going to open up this shortcut uh, called Object Editor. And this is our tool to basically build that uh, object definition document, edit it, play with it. Uh, it's, it's kind of a lot of things in one. So ATA solar cell. And here we see the, the, the hierarchy uh, that all these objects are going to be injected uh, at runtime. So we see our top level object, which is the ATE. And under here is a test class. And we're injecting in test solar cell. And then there's some other functional things like a DUT handler. How, how would the DUT come into the jig and out? And then this is just a manual, manual driver. And then there's a barcode reader driver. And so and if we look in the test class, we just collapse that down. Underneath, we see uh, there's the solar jig. And under here, there's a test base, which, which the test uh, class inherits from. And again, in, a, in an ancestor, we can actually inject functionality, in fact, inject objects. And we've got a thing called the MES, is where how data is transacted with the test executive. Is it coming locally or is it coming from our platform? And how we're visualizing that data as well. Is it uh, um, on, on the, that test view that, uh, that we have? Um, but I won't get into that stuff yet, but let's have a look at this um, solar jig. So let me just uh, show the soft front panel for the solar jig. And now I'm going to show a soft ramp panel for the uh, for the solar jig, the, the Myria. Now this is the this is the driver that is hooked up to essentially the, the solar cell, the relays that control the fan and, and and light. I can I can run that. So if I click that. Um, have to trust me that the lights are actually coming on. The fan is running and I can take a measurement. Uh, if I turn the light off and measure, then, then you can see you see the 50 hertz sitting on that. Um, if I run the executive, select the spec, Okay. Start it. See that 
as the test executive is making call or as the test class is acting on the um the the solar jig it's you see it's interacting with it the software panel is updating there's there's a venting going on on there so um, that's really useful for debugging and, and seeing what's going on but it's also really useful to bring up these soft front panels for these instruments and subcomponents and and you know you might um, have an issue with the jig you want to you know uh, connect in particular routes and things and probe stuff this allows you to do it and uh, a good uh, good example is that um, system i showed you before automate uh, the test engineer at Automate is constantly using those those um, instrument front panels and running tests, seeing what's going on uh, whenever he has some kind of issue. So yeah, so this is this is just a like I said, a really simple test system. Um, but what I'll do now is just show you how easy it is to make change. So let me close this down now. Um, imagine that uh, you want to um, do verification on your um, test class, your your solar cell test class. Um, and a great way to do verification is to, instead of using a real instrument, is to use um, uh, simulation. And you can inject in known values. And you can use that to, you know, part of your verification. So, as you can see here, uh, we've got a solar jig base and a solar jig my Rio. There's no solar jig simulation. So we can create that at any time. And I've made one previously. And here's that component. I'm just going to put that in here. to excuse my machine, it, it is so slow sometimes. It's like an abacus. There you go. Um, now, if I open up the object editor. By the way, the uh, the, the, the beanie that Ben's wearing, um, and it's got Viking written on it, um, that's what uh, this architecture was called when we worked at Cochlear. And um, Shelley Gretman came to visit us. And uh, when she got back to the States, she sent uh, Neil and I uh, one of these beanies each. Uh, and it's Viking, powered by LiveView. So uh, we've kept that in. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Keeps your, yeah, keeps your yeah, head warm. Cool. Yeah. Um, OK, so uh, let me open up the solar cell test system. And what I'm going to do is I want to replace this solar jig my Rio with the um, simulation one. So all I need to do is just delete this. Okay. Now underneath here, because I want to inject it into my um, test class, I want to go and add a solar jig sim. And I'm just going to call it solar jig. That's what the solar um, cell test class expects it to be called. Okay. I can show the software panel. Looks the same, looks good. But if I look at my software panel for my solar jig, it's now a simulation. I can run this. You know, so light off, 500, light on, 1,200, um, and doesn't do anything really. Uh, but if I run this, now I'm putting known values in, and I can corner test things. Um, I could even have um, a driver where I, I manually input data um, instead of having the, the actual um, driver itself, the, the instrument itself. So um, this is extremely useful. Um, and again, I haven't made any code change. 
I haven't had to go into my um, solar cell test class and change anything. It's and I didn't have to include any dependencies in it. I I don't have to re-verify my test class. Now I'm just checking in. It's good. Okay. Um, so change changes is, is a lot easier and especially for, for regulated industries. Um, what I would like to show you now, now I could say this, but I'll, I'll just leave that. So I've, I've mentioned the spec. Now I'm just handling, uh, pulling the spec and pushing that information uh, locally. So if we look at the spec uh, solar cell, uh, it's, it's just an XML document. Um, we are, we are, the next version of this is going to be JSON and we're looking at building an editor for this. Uh, but if you look in here, there's just a, a header. And then there's tests, you can group tests together uh, here you can see the, um, the test where we did the light off and it calls a method in the test class called cell light off. And then there's a, um, a light on fan off and then there's a method here that we're calling. So and limits um, units. This way to think of this is like the paper traveler. Um, that comes down to the test system. It ingests it and executes it and fills it out and then writes a report. That report can be, depending on the uh, component you're using to manage that, can be just saved locally or it can be pushed somewhere. And we've got a component that will push it up to our platform. So reports, if I look at the reports here, uh, solar cell, there's a few of them here, and if I open one of those up, you can see the header is filled out a bit, uh, who did the test, what was the final result of the test, um, serial number, date and time, um, and then these subtests, uh, what was the value of the test? Uh, this is that simulation one that I just did. So it was a pass, um, the value was 500, uh, here, 1200, so on. Uh, what I'd like to do quickly is just show you uh, what a Viper component looks like. Uh, so I'll just show you the um, sorry, wrong one. So I'll show you the uh, solar rig, my Rio driver that we, we did, uh, just to, so you can get an idea of what a Viper component looks like. Uh, if you look in here, so set up as a project. And, and the original intention of this, uh, particularly when we created Viking and, uh, and, and brought that into Cochlea, uh, was that there was a whole range of um, lab view capability. So um, uh, not everyone was capable with OO um, and a lot of people did more R&D kind of work and then there was people that more uh, working on test systems. And uh, so we needed something that was um, very, fairly easy to, to pick up and use and very template like so that's what we've kind of designed this around so if you look at uh at the uh solar jig my Rio, you can see that well it inherits from solar jig base so solar jig base is built as or pack libraries i think it's pack libraries here um if you look inside here um then if you could, if you're familiar with uh gds and and, and goop then this probably looks quite familiar to you um, so we just have an initialization, so we're going to 
here just create the readers and writers and uh, there's a set light so we're just writing down to the MyRio um, and there's some uh, eventing to update the user interface so it's it's very template driven um, and once you sort of have start to work on it it's, it's pretty pretty easy to, to to create methods and and, uh, and get going so so but you can just use GDS on this so I could go um, goop you know add method and I can create a method so it uses my Holmstrom's beautiful tool to, to work on this um, which is fantastic um, and again uh, the component builds as a tag library to show you what a test class looks like Let's look at the, um, uh, the solid jig, solar cell. That's it, test solar cell. Uh, so that's got a lot of crap in it because I just created one from, a, from an existing one that was more complicated. So What we do is we just have basically tests that we perform and these tests can be created from templates um, so if we look at a, a test double oh, time and it's just a, a template there that you can you can use and you can create your own particular test so uh, let's look at cell light on fan off So here we're just interacting with the solar jig base. We're setting the light on, turning the fan off, waiting a certain amount of time, and we're registering the voltage. So it's really easy to create this test class layer, create, create a particular test, and then fill them in from there. So it's, again, very, very template-like. You don't really need to know OO to, to work with this, and that was, that was quite important. Um, I don't ever want this to be something that's so sort of complex to use or oh my god it's it so the users are woe so it's it, i can't use it no it's, it's it's very simple to use um so that's a, a test class so let me show you a test system that is more complex um and if you saw neil's demo this morning uh he ran the flux capacitor test and uh Brilliant product. So, if I just, I could just run it from the shortcut here, flux capacitor, um, but that just shows the software panel of the executive, and you don't get to play with software panels underneath. So, I'm going to run the object editor. Uh, just any questions at the moment? Oh, is the report generation its own class? Override have something? Absolutely you can. So um, that um, component that handles the reporting, if you look uh, here, I call it MES, Manufacturing Execution System. Um, and I'm using a, a local you could create your own or you could edit this to, to do your own reporting. Um, so that's a completely plug-in thing. Uh, you could create MES, my own special reporting, um, and, and it would work. As long as it hooks into MES base, inherits from that, then that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. So if I open up the flux capacitor, You can see there's a lot more going on here. I'll just collapse a lot of this down. Um, so that's our test class for the flux capacitor. Underneath we've got switching, uh, um, uh, flux capacitor, 
um, firmware um, driver, LCR, Moodis, PSU, DMM, JTAG, frequency counter, um, etc. Uh, switch manager has switches underneath it, so two key sites, matrix one and matrix two, and then a motor driver. So there's a lot of a lot of very rich hierarchy that you can define here and inject where you want the minute and add to it. So I could right click on it here and go and add another T site into here if I wanted to, um, or change the, you know, I'm, maybe tomorrow it's, it's a NI um, matrix instead of a key site matrix. Uh, you could you could do that. As long as it inherits, you don't have to build all this into your deployment. Uh, it's all C6 then. Um, let me just open this. And just to show you just what you do get, uh, for instance, I can show you the soft front panel for the um, switch manager underneath this. I can open up a matrix. I can, I can connect switches. Um, LCR meter, um, DMM, measure, um, JTAG, etc. There's, there's, there's lots of, you know, this is a, a, an engineering tool as well, um, but let's you prototype. And if I log in and run, You'll see it. Uh, uh, I've got to select the spec. Just to kind of you can see it's all running. Um, when you saw that I entered the serial number in, I mean, this is local. There's no validation on the, um, the serial number, but our platform does do that. So if you use the uh, co uh, connector, if you like, to our platform, type the serial number in or scan it, then it will um, validate that that unit is supposed to be here. It hasn't failed previously. Um, it's not quarantined. Uh, you haven't missed a step in your in your uh, workflow. Um, so that's and if it's all good brings down that spec, executes it. Um, okay, so that's that's a, a more complex kind of system. But yeah, as you can see, from the solar cell test system to this, we're using a lot of the same components. Uh, you don't have to rebuild all that stuff. You don't have to go and uh, um, uh, recompile. Uh, things just plug in. So um, that's the beauty of it. And if you, in particular, if you're working in the regulated industry, I'd, I'd say this is with having a look at, uh, I think it's going to be open source. Um, again, test stand is out there, and uh, this, you know, I'm not saying that this is a replacement for test stand because test stand does a lot of things, and uh, test stand is a very powerful test engine ex executive. Um, so, but this is just another option, and then sometimes uh, you've just got LiveView developers that just know LiveView, and and this can be a good fit for them. Um, Again, you know, uh, regulated industries. Um, so, um, but again, you can do uh, a lot of stuff with Viper uh, that that is not related to test systems. Um, you can build anything you want out of it. That's uh, um, yeah. Um, we uh, we were recently working with uh, a medical device company to build a system that would parallel test. Um, 50 or 100 medical devices. Uh, you simply plug one into a port, you get detected, and spin up a, an engine in the background. This is all running on industrial controller in RT. And that would be an engine that could test that particular unit. And then over that was a server that would uh, uh, manage it all. And then uh, it was a multi connect server that allowed tablets to connect in and uh, 
show uh, the whole progress of a floor, make a tongue in, look at a particular unit, interact with it, and so on. So I mean, uh, operators walk around the, the line with tablets and the system just uh, executing tests. So that was all Viper uh, running on RT. Uh, so that is currently what I'm working on. Um, and uh, that's the next generation of Viper. Um, so that's what I'm working to at least. Um, but also uh, this, this uh, test executive side of this well will also be released as well. Um, now, one thing is if you want to create a, uh, a uh, Viper component, how would you go about doing that? So let me open up Logan. What else did you make? Uh, I'll show you. Show the rover. Yeah, I made a space rover. Awesome. <laughs> cool. <laughs> We're geeks. Okay, so um, I want to uh, create projects and You see, there's a, a project template here. I can create a Viper component. So click that. And here we go. So uh, let's go and uh, create one. I'm just going to put it in my temp drive. And say Apple. <laughs> um, I'll just do that again. All right, uh, bike. So in the background is a lot of VI scripting voodoo going on. Uh, basically pick up a template component and transform that into uh, the one that's uh, called bike. Um, yeah, a lot of, that was a, quite a bit of work to get this going, but uh, it works quite nicely. So yeah, in the background, it's doing all that. So boom, there it is. It's, um, uh, it's called bike and here's uh, the library bike, classes bike inside here is, um, I think it's named correctly, soft front panels, bike config, uh, software and panel attributes. That's the other thing you can view your attributes live. And uh, then it's uh, in the build, it's created uh, and named all of this correctly. That was actually quite challenging to, to get this all working correctly, but it was, it was satisfying. Um, so that comes with it as well. So you, um, previously, what we had to do is uh, copy a component template folder, rename the folder, rename the project, blah, 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 and eventually, so you know, you, you just waste time. Um, if you made a typo, it you know, was um, uh, a pain in the ass. Um, but I think uh, that's sort of good for time. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I should be covering. Um, Okay, I'll show you something very cool. So, object editor. Let me open that up. And when I went to open, you might have seen an object editor. Let's just Instead of a flux pass, let's do that. I mean, they're all components like that. This, oh, we've just injected an object editor into an object editor. 
Can I show the software on panel? Oh, that's great. Uh, let me uh, add an object. Well, can I add an object editor into it? an object editor? Uh, yeah. oh, yes, I can. There you go. So you can inject into self recursively if you wanted to. Um, I'm trying to think of a use <laughs> apart from uh, doing fun things like this. But this tells me that things work nicely when you can do uh, unexpected things. Well, it does make sense that you should be able to do that, but it's nice that you can. Um, but now that there's use cases. Okay, um, I think we're good for time. Um, any questions? Is it on GitHub? Uh, not yet, no, no. Um, I'll be putting it up soon. Uh, I always keep saying this and there's always something to do. Um, but uh, I, I, working, I'd like to get it done within the next couple of months. Um, I want to get this next version out that I've been working on. Uh, although this, this version is very usable, um, it is Windows only. Uh, the next version is Windows NRT, um, and that, that's what I want to release. Again, things like uh, the object definition document um, being in XML, it's not ideal. The new one is in JSON. Um, and there's just a few things around, uh, like, for instance, soft front panels. Of course, they don't work in RT. They do on Windows. You want to keep that, though. So there's, there's stuff inside that to exclude so um, I want to get all that, that right. I was, I was hoping to have that done uh, a lot earlier than now, but uh, um, with everything else going on with uh, projects and things, uh, this, is, this is a side thing at the moment. But um, yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll be soon. And I, and I want to do documentation as well. Uh, I don't want just people to pick this up and, and, and just try to, to use it. I want them to be able to follow uh, uh, a nice tutorial uh, that's very uh, example driven. Uh, I find that's always the best way that engineers learn. Uh, I don't want to throw just technical stuff at them. Um, I just want them to follow it. And really, you do get the, the light click uh, when they start playing with it. Any other questions? Um, one question is, is who would like to uh, uh, be able to have a play with this? Infinite. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, um, I'd love to share that to you, Mike. Um, maybe we should have a beer and uh, I'll give you a bit more of a show. And, um, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking for, for people that can kind of use this in anger and play with it. Um, not necessarily that you want to immediately go and deploy it into a system. Um, but uh, if you've got, uh, yeah, you just want to have a play. Uh, maybe, maybe try doing something uh, related to what you want to do. Um, maybe you might see it as a good fit and you can you can really start to use it. I mean, we have this deployed out in several clients um, and this is my go-to uh, uh, test executive. So, um, yeah, but again, Viper, you can, you know, that's got a lot of applications. So, yeah, uh, we're just around the corner, Mike, so <laughs> anytime. Thanks, Christian. I'm going to show off your diorama, Ben. Go on. You give a, a bit of a talk about your space thing. All right. Go on, show it. You've got to hold it up. Uh, okay.
This is the um, Apollo Lunar model. Module, hey. Yeah, module. Yeah. And there's a spaceship. It's made out of foam that you put together. Guy. And a little car. Yeah, Mark the little rover. Yep. A little buggy. A rover. And what's that one? So, this is the Curiosity Rover. Yep. And this is probably one of my favourites too. It's pretty cool. That's, that's still wandering around on Mars. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Kristen. I'll just um, reach out to me anytime um, if uh, you want to learn more or, or any questions or, um, yeah, definitely if you want to play with it. Um, I've uh, thrown it out to a few people uh, already and uh, um, the, the feedback was it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> Uh, and, and useful, um, but uh, I would like some uh, some more eyes on it. So um, this, this has been a uh, uh, something I've been working on for probably about six years now. So uh, the original idea was uh, when I was contracting into um, working with a contract manufacturer, and they would have uh, bring me in to work on a test system, and I just went. This test system is so much like the last one I worked on. I mean, all you've changed is a, a multimeter or something else. Um, and the tests are very much the same. It's just a different product. And, and but I was in the end, I was just building an executable for this test system or that test system. And uh, I was really sort of captivated with this idea of being able to assemble it from, from pre-built components. Uh, just to basically have every test system basically the same, if you like, but just using different components depending upon uh, what it was. So, yeah, that was that was the uh, where where it sort of came from. Uh, and then when I was uh, running my own business, Cyware, I uh, came and worked with, with Neil at uh, Cochlear, and we saw that this had a real good fit. Um, and I went over to NI Week and uh, I was chatting to Jim Crane and I was showing it to him. And he said, oh, that looks like the Pence injection. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I didn't set out to create dependency injection. I just had a problem to solve uh, and, and kind of captivated with with um, doing that. So, um, and then it sort of led into this. So, um, but no, this is, this is a lot of fun. I've worked on a lot of OO stuff Previously, I did a uh, uh, developer way back, oh gosh, that'd be over 15 years ago. Um, yeah, um, and that was, that was a lot of fun. So I love doing OO and uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's great fun. Anyway, um, thank you everyone. Um, like I said, just ping me anytime. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, message me there or um, Grab my contact details, uh, just uh, kurt at medulla.net. Email me. Um, yeah. All right, everyone. Well, have a, a great summit. And uh, yeah, I'm now going to kick back, have a beer, and uh, watch some more sessions. So enjoy. You want to do Vulcan? Yeah. I can't do it. I can do both. Oh, gosh. I can do this. No, it starts to look like root fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.